nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The roll, please. Avchi? Here. Belki? Here. Marquez? Here. McIver? Here. Paderaski? Here. Shower? Here. Seifert? Here. Seven present. We have a quorum. The next item is uh, a cons uh, questions, comments, and announcements of a general nature. We added this to the beginning of our city council member for the benefit of anyone in the audience who wanted to address the city council on any items uh, so that you didn't have to sit through a whole city council to, to uh, make comments. So looks like we have uh, Mr. Joe Kenny coming to the speaker. Good evening, Madam Mayor. Good evening, Council. Um, I was hoping that maybe that during your uh, department head report you can possibly talk about an item you have on your consent agenda this evening, item number C uh, regarding Rags Electric um, for an amount of $35,000. Um, I've been through a couple of the meetings, and I know that was a budgeted item at $25,000. And I was hoping maybe they can discuss it here, because you get something that's in your consent agenda, and you're voting to vote pass something um, that's within a consent agenda. I was hoping the public could hear why they're going 10000 over on that on that particular item. Why don't we address it right now? Dan, can you address that right now? Sure. I'm going <clears> to <throat> try to summarize it here. Basically, uh, staff went out uh, to bid on... Uh, uh, what's referred to as electrical plant maintenance work. In other words, the electrical cleanup. The electrical cleanup was uh, at three plants. Uh, with that said, it's basically removal of uh, old softening equipment as well as some of the panels uh, needed to be replaced and uh, a lot of cleanup. So long story short, that we went out originally to uh, request for quotes. Uh, we came back and we had, uh, I believe it was two vendors. With those two vendors, the committee had reviewed it based on further discussion. Uh, that did come back to the city council and the quotes were rejected and staff was requested to go back out and uh, uh, rebid. With that said, we did go back out to rebid um, and this time around we had uh, uh, additional vendors, an additional vendor. Uh, at the same time, the additional vendor had posed a question back to staff. Uh, staff issued an addendum, uh, being that the electrician uh, was looking out for the best interest of the city. Uh, with that addendum, uh, once the bids were open, uh, the two original vendors had both uh, protested the uh, uh, addendum, stating that certain components were missing and or not to code. Once we did see that, uh, we immediately took all the, all the proposals, as well as our original proposals, sent it back to uh, uh, sent it to Christopher Burke Engineering, the electrical engineer, John Caruso in this case, to review and evaluate and to come out and perform a site visit on the uh, uh, plants and the scope of work. Uh, with that said, John Caruso um, basically looked at what we had specified and uh, unfortunately he had to add a couple things because once he started looking into panels, he had identified uh, wire, for example, or, or certain other components, uh, controllers as they were referred to as motor controllers. Um, and he felt that once he had evaluated that was that would be in the best interest for the city with these electrical components. Obviously staff does not have all the knowledge of an electrician. Uh, and with that said, this item, while it's $10,000 over, still may have uh, come back up if we were to award it to somebody at $25,000 once they really got into the, um, the guts of the panels and et cetera. So with that said, uh, we did open up, uh, uh, we basically went back out to requote. Once we requoted it, uh, the cost to come up higher, uh, and that cost was an approximately $35,000, of which is $10,000 over uh, the uh, projected budget. Uh, there is, uh, again, funds are available for this through the Water Depreciation Fund, and staff felt that this was a, a very necessary job uh, to make sure that we can clean all this stuff up. Yeah, one of the things, uh, Dan, we talked about a number of options, and one was just scrapping the project and bringing it back, but that didn't seem to make practical sense because now that we had an engineer look at it and we had real costs, again, um, it's not significantly, uh, it, it doesn't at all significantly affect our budget, and Dan and I talked about this, and our water depreciation fund uh, is carrying a balance uh, estimated at the end of this year about 600000 and that's just for depreciation to fix things, maintain our system. So certainly uh, we felt that was uh, something that was in the best interest to do it now. Okay. Alderman Podorowski? Did municipal services, did you agree with it? Yes. All Everything that you? Mr. Gombeck said along the line. 
Yeah, well, he, we, this was all discussed last week at municipal service. you all three agree? Yes. We've been through this at several municipal services meetings. Where I, I just wanted to make sure you had agreed. Yes. All three. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to address the council? I have, oh, one, sorry. I, I have one question for Dan. Dan, one of the um, proposals was um, double what Rags was proposing. I mean, was there was the the scope of work very specific? You know, that seems like a huge difference. Mm -hmm. it's, the answer is yes. Okay. At the end of the day, uh, the scope was changed. No, but for the second time that you went out for bid, you had a very specific scope of work. Right. Because I, I was just questioning the, the huge disparity there in, in terms of the, the pricing between at least two of the companies. And on the second on the second go around? Right, on the second go around. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Could, could we move it uh, from consent to uh, the regular meeting? For what reason? To get a, get a vote, get a count. I'd like to hear how many all the men really want this done for 35,000, which is 10,000 over what the budget allowed. Let's move item C to take it off the consent agenda. It will become item B under new business. And now we need to renumber the consent agenda. We have A, B, B D will become C. And that's all, the, uh, that's all the changes. We previously uh, had a request to remove item E from the consent agenda, uh, the, uh, the economic development de uh, agreement on the Deering Town uh, Center Home Depot. So that is item A under new business. And now we have uh, item B under new business for the proposal on Regs Electric. Does any, anyone else in the audience want to address the council? I think I just asked, but I'll ask again. Uh, all right, then let's move on to the approval of the minutes. Uh, do Mayor, I I'm sorry, can I just clear? Yes. Uh, I know Bob Taft is in the audience. Bob, you're waiting till the end of the meeting. I want to make sure you didn't miss it because I saw you reading something. You're going to wait. Okay. All right, thank you. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. Yes, I forgot about that. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Alderman MacGyver, seconded by Alderman Seifert. Uh, I, we have one uh, change to the minutes uh, on page three. We are adding uh, the name of Gloria Jiskra to the members of the Citizen of the Year Committee. Any, any discussion? The roll, please. McIver? Aye. Seifert? Aye. Schauer? Aye. Paderowski? Aye. Marquez? Aye. Belke? Aye. Avci? Aye. Seven ayes. The minutes have been approved. Uh, receiving of communications. Do any of the aldermen have communications to share? Let's move on to the mayor's report, and it uh, gives me a great deal of pleasure to uh, introduce a, a, a new guy on the block here, a, a new uh, superintendent of schools with District 66, Dr. Uh, Tim Arnold. He is, uh, he's new to this area, but he's not new to education. Uh, you've done a few things in your career here. I understand you've been a, an assistant principal, uh, a principal, and a superintendent of the Elwood School District. Uh, before coming to uh, District 66. I'd like to ask you to come up. Uh, your education is at uh, Illinois State University and uh, or Lewis University, too. So, yeah, kind of stayed around the area. A little bit. But welcome. Well, thank you. And council members and Mayor Weaver, thank you. I, on behalf of my family, I just want to tell you how excited we are to be in Darien. And we moved here in July, and we love it. Yeah, Our kids good. have adjusted to the schools. I've got yeah, one in yeah. high school That's and okay. one in the elementary schools. So great community. and. Get to so we need to get a little closer, okay. otherwise the TV is not going to okay. pick up what there you're saying you there. Yeah. Closer to the mic? To the yeah. mic. Yes, yes, closer, closer, closer to the, the mic. mic. It, it can move, too. So. <laughs> Not used to that. So once again, and also wanted to give a special thank you. I know he's not here tonight, Chief Brown, for coming out and just reaching out to us and making sure we're safe, we're on the same page, and building that community uh, connection with our schools, uh, the police department. We have one of our three schools, obviously, Elizabeth Ide, in the city of Darien. So um, we juggle that to Page County Sheriff's Department, law enforcement with the city of Darien, and it's worked out well. So thank Do you. Have any questions for the for Dr. Arnold? I know he's been on the job eight months, as he explained to me, but he had a lot of learning to do, so yes. that's why it took him a while to get here. But uh, welcome, and thank you for coming to, uh, to meet with us. 
that. Yeah, and we appreciate that. I've gotten, you know, my kids are in District 66, so I know I've gotten a lot of really positive feedback from uh, parents that I run into, and, you know, um, obviously uh, JTD was there a long time and left a legacy, but um, it's, it's, you know, refreshing to have new ideas and, and, and a fresh face and bringing that to the district, so we're excited. Yeah, getting to know the names of all the children is a, ch a challenge all, all, by its, you know, all by itself. So, thank you very much for coming to meet us. Thanks. Yes, you gotta yes. shake everyone's hand. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Welcome. Welcome. How are you? Hi, welcome. Yes. Welcome again. Again, thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And you can count on Dan for those intergovernmental agreements. We'll be talking. And Arnold. Yeah, for, uh, <laughs> let's see, for salt, for uh, asphalt, Maybe, and, yes. and concrete. So forth. That's right. This is uh, we haven't had District 66 Correct. get into a lot of our programs, so this is uh, this is great. We have a lot to offer. So thank you. Let's move on to the city clerk's report. A couple of items, Madam Mayor. Uh, Darien City offices will be closed on Monday, February 18th, to observe President's Day. The next city council meeting will be held on Tuesday, February 19th, and meet and greet with the mayor will take place on Tuesday, February the 19th from six at six o'clock here at City Hall in the upstairs conference room. Thank you. Uh, City Administrator's uh, report. Thank you, Mayor Weaver. I have one item uh, to mention. I'm sure a lot of people watching the news over the last couple of weeks noticed uh, or saw that coyote incident, and I believe it was Riverside, where some coyotes actually came up to the person's house and were trying to knock the door down. Well, that has sparked some, uh, again, more questions and comments from residents. We have sent out a number of uh, uh, bits of information, including this past uh, 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 Darien Direct Connect. And I'm not sure what, uh, if there's anything the City Council wants us to, to do further or look further, but Mayor Weaver and I spoke about that. And that really scared a lot of people because at this, usually now the, the, those anim, uh, the coyotes have attack, attacked and killed some small dogs in Darien as recent as last Wednesday, but nobody has ever seen the incident like in Riverside. So if there's, uh, and, and I think the council gets questions about that periodically. Um, so I don't know if that's an issue the council wants to pursue or not, but Mayor Weaver had asked me about it and I thought that's a question for the council. Now I had asked, uh, I had asked Brian to approach the, um, the uh, forest preserve. Uh, as you know, they call deers on a routine basis and uh, see if they would like to start a program regarding uh, coyotes. I, I know that the, that is a, um, that is a huge task, but it would be worth exploring a conversation with them. We've seen lots of yeah, we've seen lots of information on this subject. Uh, uh, most often, uh, we have to remind residents you can't leave any food out. You cannot feed these animals because that's what makes them fearless. And uh, yes, can I make a suggestion that perhaps we have either a representative from the Forest Preserve District mm -hmm. and or from Willowbrook Wildlife Haven, who is part of the DuPage County Forest Preserve District, maybe come to a city council meeting to talk about uh, kind of preventative measures and things that you shouldn't do and remind residents so that, you know, as it's televised, that information gets out there? Yes, we had a, a lot of information in uh, in our latest, was it our latest uh, Direct Connect, I believe? Right. And uh, that would be worthwhile to do because we've learned from experts that, yes, you can do something about removing the coyotes in your, in your neighborhoods, but they come right back. There'll be more that come back to the area. So uh, it's a pretty pervasive problem, but the issue is you have to, to watch your own animals, your own pets at home, and uh, do not leave out any food that might uh, Right, but I think hearing it from, you know, an, an expert. Extra expert coming into a meeting, I'm sure they'd be happy to come. I'm sure, sure it's, we, we're not the only city or village that has had that request, so um, that, that would be a suggestion. That'd think. be great. We can, we can approach them. We'll do that, and we'll also check if there's um, information we could run on our cable now, independent of the council meeting, because I think there's informational videos also that would maybe the county or Forest Preserve could give us, but also having somebody here is a good idea. Right. 
I, I saw a recent article by Sharon Wallenberg, who happens to be a Darien resident. Uh, was it in the Darien patch that followed the incident? Uh, From Wednesday? Yeah. Oh, yes. She wrote a, a terrific, uh, you know, article about this very subject and how residents can uh, caution, take care of that issue at their own homes. So I would recommend people take a look at that article. Uh, that's all I had. Thank you. Okay. Uh, de department head reports, do uh, in either of uh, Deputy Chief Cooper or Dan have anything to tell us today? No report this evening, Madam Mayor. No report? No report. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's move to the Treasurer's report. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, Mayor. Just so the Council is aware, the Chief is at a, uh, a, a school meeting today, I believe, with the Parent Teachers Association, so he was not available, so John is here this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, this evening I'm requesting Council's approval of warrant number 121316 in the amount of $42,589.58 from the listed funds, payroll for the period ended January 24, 2013, for $244,046.68 for a total to be approved $286,636.26. Do I have a motion to approve? Alderman McIver, seconded by Alderman Shower. Any questions for the, clip, uh, for the Treasurer? The roll, please. McIver? Aye. Shower? Aye. Seifert? Aye. Avchi? Aye. Belke? Aye. Marquez? Aye. Paderaski? Aye. Seven eyes. I think you wanted to give us a report on the pension plan. Yeah, I just wanted to update the council. Uh, as I'd indicated to you previously, we did have a meeting of the police pension board last Wednesday. I'd like to thank Alderman Avci. Uh, he did uh, attend that meeting. Uh, we're happy to have him. It's the first time we've had an outside visitor to that uh, board in quite some time. Uh, I think it's a very important board. Uh, it represents the biggest asset of the city with over $21 million currently invested uh, and being handled by two uh, fund managers. Uh, but that being said, it was the purpose to it was to update for the uh, fourth quarter results uh, from October through December of the two fund managers and the year to date of well, the calendar year. Uh, we're on a different fiscal year or obviously on the April 30th fiscal year. Uh, but those numbers for uh, uh, one fund manager we have is MB Financial. And uh, both returns for the quarter were very similar. It was less than 1% uh, for MB. It was about 78 basis points for the quarter. And for uh, Sawyer and Faldudo, the other investment firm, it was 82 basis points. That's a uh, net of their fees. Uh, for the year, it's more encouraging. For the 12 months from January through December, MB Financial's performance was in excess of 9%, 9.05% for those 12 months. Uh, Sawyer and Faldudo, the net of fees was 8.15%. Uh, so between 8 and 9 percent performance for the year, uh, which is pretty good considering we're very limited in the types of investments. Uh, the investments are, uh, you can't just invest and go and buy uh, Google stock. Uh, you're much more restricted by the state. Uh, the pension board has their own philosophy. They want no more than 40 percent invested in equities. So this type of a return with a 60 percent fixed income, essentially a bond allocation and uh, 40 percent equities, I think is very good for that period of time. So hopefully January starting out pretty well. Uh, they wouldn't commit to how well, but uh, I think January starting out pretty well. So hopefully we can continue that. Uh, the only other thing I'd like to pass along, the uh, board did decide to hire a secretary for the uh, pension board. Uh, they hired Lauterbach and Amen, which is also the firm that does the accounting, the monthly accounting for the police pension board. They decided to hire, decided to hire a secretary to put together the various agenda, as well as organize the personnel, uh, police personnel files and that. They did decide to do that. The cost is uh, about $650 a month, so about $7,800 a year, uh -huh. uh, which is quite a, an additional expense. Uh, uh, so hopefully they, they can get them up to speed, and then maybe we can uh, pull that back a little bit. But uh, that was um, was that a recommendation of yours to the board? It was the... not a recommendation of mine. It was something the board uh, felt was necessary. In the past, uh, board members uh, generally handled that internally. Uh, we had one officer that retired who used to do a lot of that work. He retired, and uh, the current uh, board members feel it's just quite a bit, quite a burden on them, and that they don't feel they're doing the job properly and maintaining the minutes and that, so they felt comfortable with it. Uh, 
I did get Lauterbach to agree to uh, commit to uh, fix that fee for two years at least, so at least it can't go up. Uh, but it is. I mean, it's almost an $8,000 annual, plus it's a $1,000 fee just to get on board and, and sign to get things going. Uh, well, you, you just suggested that um, that maybe we wouldn't have to have that high a fee after they get everything organized. Do you think it's going to take them two years to get all the records no, organized? No, I just wanted to make sure there were no increases, at least for that two-year period. So what we were but getting it could go little, down. It could go down, and the level, the services that they perform, they are on a uh, an a la carte basis. So we can hopefully trim it back in the future. My hesitation is whenever you jump into one of these things, it's easy to get in, and it's a lot harder to back off and, and pull it back. So, but I think that's something we should uh, try to keep in the back of our minds. Okay, Alderman Abchi. I just wanted to ask, Mike, um, does the cost for that come from the police pension fund or from the police department budget? Well, it comes, I mean, we have $21 million in assets, so it is an expense just like the management fee charged by the investment managers. It does come from the police pension fund, but the police pension fund, is the amount that we as a city need to contribute every year is actuarially determined. So the more expenses it has, the less it has in the fund, and the more we as a city would have to put in in subsequent years to, to make up for that. So. It's, uh, it is sort of one and the same. Mm. We make up the difference. Well, we essentially make up the difference uh, based on the actuarial uh, calculations. Oh, because, I see. Okay. okay. Not because of that deduction. No. It okay. would not be a direct dollar for dollar, but it would be uh, if the per fund performance was enough to offset that. But just having that expense will create this cause the city to have to contribute a larger amount in the future just because the expenses for the fund are higher. So even if you have a good return, it's still coming out of that return. Our expenses are already high enough. <laughs> Alderman Schaller. Mike, isn't our return, our target return, is usually about 7% on this? That's what the actuarial is using. Uh, I have a feeling, based on what the Illinois Department of Insurance is recommending, that may be going down to 65 to 6 and 3 quarters next year. Uh, they have come out with some standards based on the size of the pension funds, what amount they're recommending. So that may have an impact. I haven't talked to the actuary. That will be after this year on April 30th, and we can see what impact it would have. Uh, he can run the numbers at the recommended amount. That doesn't mean we necessarily have to go with the recommendation, but considering fixed income rates are very low and large amount of the fund, 60% of the fund, is invested in fixed income, it is hard to imagine a, an ongoing 7% return. But right. that's one of the, the aspects of it. The other is how many active members, how many retired members, uh, uh, what the life expectancy is. Uh, if you should have a couple of retired uh, officers pass away, they all have an impact, and that's why they do an annual actuarial report to f factor all those in there for determining next year's contribution. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Other questions? Thank you, uh, Treasurer Quinn. Let's go to standing committee reports. Are there any re all, all in my case? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, last Monday, the Municipal Services Committee approved the minutes of the 12-12-12 uh, Municipal Services meeting and passed those on to the clerk's office. And uh, the next meeting of the Municipal Services Committee is scheduled for February 25th at 6.30 here in the Council Chambers. Alderman McIver. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The next uh, meeting of the police committee will be this Wednesday. It is not our regular meeting day. Uh, we regularly meet on the first Thursday, so it is Wednesday, uh, February 6th at 6 p.m. here in the council chambers. Alderman Podorowski. Uh, admin finance will have a meeting next Monday, which is uh, the 11th. Okay. At 6.30? At 6.30. Down here, uh, upstairs? Upstairs. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Let's move to questions and comments agenda related first. Do any of the aldermen have any questions or comments on the items on the agenda this evening? I'd like to open it up to the floor. If anyone here in the audience uh, would like to, uh, to uh, talk about any of the items on our, our agenda this evening, please come forward. All right, then let's move on to old business. And there being no old business, Let's, re let's move right to the consent agenda. And for the, uh, for the uh, viewing audience, I'd like to read the items that are on the consent agenda this evening. Uh, we have removed two items from the consent agenda, item uh, C and E. 
So item A uh, on our consent agenda is a motion to approve an ordinance amending Title 5A, Chapter 11, Section 5A-11-2-1, F, Chapter F3, regarding off-street parking design and maintenance of the Darien City Code, uh, which relates to parking stall width. Item B is a consideration of a motion to approve a resolution authorizing the mayor to accept a proposal for Meaden Bros LLC for the 2012-13 water leak survey in an amount not to exceed $8,994.74. The next item on the uh, consent agenda is a motion to approve the recommendation of, re of releasing <coughs> executive session meetings that no longer require confidentiality. Do I have a motion to approve? Alderman McIver? Second by Alderman Belke? The roll, please. McIver? Aye. Belke? Aye. Avchi? Aye. Seifert? Aye. Shower? Aye. Paderaski? Aye. Marquez? Aye. Seven ayes. The, uh, the items have been approved. Item A under new business is consideration of a motion to approve an ordinance approving an economic development agreement uh, regarding the Darien Town Center Home Depot. Do I have a motion to approve? Alderman Schauer, seconded by Alderman Abchi. Discussion. Alderman Belke, I know you wanted this removed from the uh, consent agenda. Go ahead. I wanted to clarify one point here that the Darien Town Center is no longer owned by Inland Western Real Estate Trust and it is now owned by Retail <coughs> Properties of America. So I just wanted to clear that up. And also I came across a recent article that was about municipalities and how they're gonna be vulnerable down the road to businesses that are gonna be closing down due to internet sales and online sales, such as your Borders or your Best Buy. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to say one of the factorings that um, made me wanna you know, put some money into retaining Home Depot is the fact that I think that, um, you know, we don't have the risk here of the online sales for the Home Depot as people will really visit the stores themselves to purchase and that the Darien Town Center holds two of our largest sales tax generators, which is Walmart and Home Depot. And I think it's a good mix for the center. Uh, as I said at our uh, special meeting last Wednesday, I think we have to look at this very positively. Uh, we have uh, municipalities all around us nipping at our heels trying to take our businesses away. And we have successfully been able to keep Walmart and now Home Depot in Darien. And if you look around our, our town, I think we are very, very lucky to have very few open spaces in uh, in our retail bus uh, business areas. So. I feel very positive about the step that we're taking tonight and have been taking. Any other comments? Alderman Seifert? Just what I mentioned the other day at the special meeting, even though I think this, this is somewhat of a necessity that we, we can't really help but do this, I do think since this is the third instance in six months maybe that we're doing, putting something like this together, that maybe we should develop some sort of policy which at least businesses asking for a tax incentive would at least have to follow or give us the impression of following rather than having a remote email between Inland and, and Dan and then all of a sudden we were presented with a, with an economic development package worth $750,000. I, I just think something of that size is worthy of a little bit more formality. Any other comments? I guess I would agree with that. Just to have some guidelines, um, you know, whether it's related to just in general, if someone's looking for business in, you know, um, in Darien, just an economic development policy. I mean, granted, it's it's a negotiation, but just to, um, I think, have some kind of capture at least some basic elements related to, you know. Uh, what would you, Alderman Safer? What would you recommend be in this policy? Well, I think just some general principles that, like what? Like, well, let's see. We have lease terms. How long is the lease? Or, or with. I mean, they're different scenarios. But for Home Depot, for example, will we give the same, similar incentive if it was a three-year lease or the five-year lease? Um, and something for Chuck's. Again, I mean, I think Chuck's was handled really, really well. I think there was a lot more steps that were taken in that whole process. So I think just the nature of the business, the the length of the term, whether or not they're a tenant or they they own the property. I think. 
basically just a little brainstorming session to sit down and figure out some parameters in which you know, businesses that would like some sort of tax incentive would have to basically present it just like anybody else who would, you know, can come to the city council meeting and present something. And whether it's a variance or otherwise, there's going to be some certain formality in that. And I think, you know, maybe to sit down and come up with something. Alderman McIver, what would you recommend that be in this policy? Well, you know, um, this isn't my area of expertise, but I would think that just having an economic development policy could also be a positive um, type of um, attraction to the city of Darien. I think other towns or villages have, you know, some kind of economic development plans. And we talked about it way back when we when we were um, planning and development committee. And uh, and again, I think it is related to you know the type of business. What you know, I, I don't think we treat treat a bank the same way as we you know would treat a big box or something that is a big sales tax generator. Um, but. I think it's worth taking it back maybe to, I, I hate to put it on um, Alderman Marquez's committee, but or finance committee or, or the appropriate committee to talk about uh, some kind of just, you know, whether it's uh, a mission or, or just some, com some common goals when it comes to economic development so that, um, again, I think we were all, I know some of these things have to happen behind, you know, kind of very quietly and confidentially because, you know, we're trying to, Make a deal um, that is, you know, um, hopefully, you know, to keep a uh, keep a business in Darien. But I think that it's, you know, we're, we're given information very in a very short window and then brought to council a few days later. It'd be nice to have at least, I think, like I said, with Chuck's, that was a much longer process, and we had the ownership come in and talk about it, and, and it made a lot of sense. So I, I just, I guess. I agree that conceptually, I'm not sure how it, it, it would be implemented, but from a concept, I think there should be a some kind of an economic development plan that's um, summarized, formalized, described. I'm not sure what the the right economic way incentive is. plan is more specific. Well, it, you know, it, it's it's like I said, it's going to be negotiated no matter what it right. is, whether it's a parking lot or whether it's a sales tax. Um, but I think just to have something that you know that that. Darien has something in place I think could be attractive as well. Right. I mean, it could be a selling point for us to, to have Brian, something did you want to address that? I'm sorry. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, independent of what, uh, what the aldermen are mentioning, just in this particular case, uh, when the city council met a week ago Wednesday, uh, again, we, we talked a little more about it, but that particular request from Home Depot came to us very quick. So just as the public's listening this, to this tonight, I think Dan probably got a call on a Friday. Uh, in the morning, and we were probably on the phone with with the landlord in Home Depot that afternoon. And point blank, at that point, they said, "Yeah, we have you have until this point to get meet that deal." So again, just on our end, it was uh, I would say, "Yeah, we hustled this one a, a bit more than we did because the the deadline that was set by Home Depot, you know, they didn't they didn't ask us. They kind of said, "Here's the deadline." So yeah. so again, we did for, again just for the public watching, we did. Um, move this one along a little quicker. And Chuck's obviously was waiting at his bank for months and months and gave us, That's a, what little, slowed down gave that us a little breathing yeah. room. This one, uh, it was the same with Walmart, as the council remembers. You know, it was, it was okay, here's my time frame to move. And Home Depot's been, uh, I don't mean this negatively against Home Depot, but as a business decision, they had an opportunity to go somewhere else, and they were making quick decisions. And I think the landlords explained to us that does happen sometimes. They'll get a call from somebody whose lease is coming up saying, you know what, I'm leaving. So, again, and yeah, I, I'd just like, always yeah, need to keep that yeah, into account. The Treasurer Corn was very involved in this in this negotiation and, and setting up this uh, the 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 final plan that we all were presented with last Wednesday, which was very very much uh, in, to our benefit, and it was structured very similarly to uh, how we uh, we shared. Uh, sales tax with uh, with Walmart in that in that uh, deal too. So yeah, and and I'm not I'm not saying I'm against it. My my point is we're being reactive instead of proactive. And I mean we bring up coyotes and we're talking about a proactive plan with coyotes. Well, this is business in Darien. You know what I mean? So it's I well. Think it's my all, my all current concern has always been that you don't want to put uh, definitive numbers down. I'm Welcome not, to Darien. We'll give you two million dollars. No, that I don't kind think of thing. We're we never about want that. to do that. Yeah. Well, that's why I was asking both of you. What do you mean by uh, you know this? this policy. I need to understand what you mean. Alderman Abchi? I think we've been quite a bit more active in that area over the last couple of years than I remember previously. 
for example, um, um, Brian has been putting out uh, reports on economic activity uh, and so forth. I agree uh, with uh, Alderman Guyver uh, and Seifert that uh, some kind of a formalized economic development policy, I think, would be helpful. But I also understand, uh, and I agree with you, Madam Mayor, that uh, a lot of these are very unique, and it's difficult to put uh, definite uh, statements in there. Some, so some general description of uh, potential uh, incentive policies that we may have and other things that, that, that go along with it. And to have that kind of a economic development policy and put it on the website, I think, would be helpful. We, we, we looked into this a couple of years ago. I don't remember the exact committee. Yeah. Uh, uh, Alderman MacGyver mentioned it might have been your Who's committee at the time. Mm -hmm. We have some basis right. to take a look at this and put some guidelines together. Well, I think we're, yeah. at that time we were talking about putting numbers out there and that kind of thing. I think this is more of a just yeah. capture the kind of the general goals that, you know, the city is, you know, the, the, you know wel welcomes new business, you know, and tries to retain existing business. I mean, maybe it's just, like I said, like a mission statement when yeah. it comes to economic yeah, development. Yeah, e exactly. Yeah. Um, but I think just at least have something out there that, you know, kind of starts the conversation perhaps earlier on, you know, with businesses that are even considering Darien, perhaps. Right. Alderman, Bel Alderman Belke? Right. As we've been discussing, it's, it's really a unique thing for the type of business that is coming in. But one of those things that we can um, spell out is that it needs to be requested before either, either it's built or before, you know, like what would happen yeah. with Ross, we had to turn them down because they were already in the middle of construction. They were already done so, with construction I mean, when they asked us, yes. one criteria that mm -hmm. we could yeah. spell out for them. Sure. I see no problem with bringing this before municipal services and initiating some discussion, you know, with Dan's assistance and hello and Ted. As Alderman MacGyver said, when we discussed that years ago, that was a different economy as well. And we were talking we were talking with the developers. We were talking with people from Inland. We talked to Mr. Manos from Brookhaven. We talked to and, – and they basically said they wanted to go out and shop their own businesses in the future in terms of what they wanted to bring in. And at that point, we left it at that. It's a different economy. Uh, as the mayor said, you drive down Cass Avenue into Westmont, you see empty – you see almost totally empty shopping centers, which you will not see in Darien. So I agree with Alderman uh, MacGyver. I think that we can put down some general principles on paper in terms of what the city of Darien has to offer. But I do agree with the mayor. There are, there are going to be situations that are going to come up where it's going to be unique to the business that it comes in. I mean, Walmart was unique. Chuck's was unique. And Home Depot was unique. So we need something that's broad that will capture that type of business, and Alderman Belke makes a good point. It's the difference between buying the property, owning the business, or just renting it. So we can do that. I think uh, I think you can, uh, Administrator Van, I think with all the stuff we've written down and done before that you could probably come up with a broad outline for the oh, yeah, yeah, we, to we, work with. We'll, uh, Dan and I will partner up on that and bring yeah. it forward. Very good. And one more comment for the budget. I think we're going to put some money into or set aside for the economic development. Well, the, the broker for sure. Well, there, it, to digress just a second, then um, Alderman Belke's mentioning we had talked about, the council had talked about and actually approved in the uh, policy for the capital projects policy a balance of 500000 to maintain in the That's capital right. projects fund, mm -hmm. either for uh, emergencies or, or development, things that might come up. So um, I'm working on the draft, and I have, you know, I have that in there. Now I'm building that, that 500000 in there for, for forgot, that reason. Yeah, I forgot about that, yeah. Good. Okay, we have item A under new business on the table, correct? We need the roll. We need the roll. Okay, so is there any further discussion on item A under new business about Home Depot? The roll, please. Shower. Aye. Avci. Aye. Marquez. Aye. Seifert. Aye. Paderewski. Aye. MacGyver. Aye. Belke. Aye. Seven ayes. Uh, motion has been all approved. Uh, item B under new business is consideration of a motion to approve a resolution accepting a proposal from Rags Electric in an amount not to exceed $35,000 for the electrical maintenance housekeeping at Plant 3, Plant 4, and Plant 5 of our water system. Do I have a, do I have a motion to approve? Uh, excuse me, motion? Alderman Seifert? 
Seconded by Alderman Marquez. Discussion. Alderman Ponderowski. Well, the reason I asked that it be moved from the consent agenda was that I, it's been bouncing around. It's going to be spent $10,000 of money over the budget amount. And it's one of those projects that could wait and compete for next year. You don't have to spend the money this year if you, just because you ac accidentally have a little extra. And the thing in itself is just not worth the effort. So that's why I will vote no. Any other discussion? Um, uh, yes. Uh, again, just so we can catch everybody up, Dan, maybe if, if the council would like a little bit, uh, maybe a description of the work. Because as, as we call it house cleaning or housekeeping, you know, that it's not fixing the windows there. This is a <laughs> electrical work that you're asking for. Is that fine, Mayor, to give a little description of that now? That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. And, and again, just to summarize, in, in some cases, uh, years ago, well, number one, when the city went to city water, there was a lot of well equipment that was in place. That well equipment served things as fluoride, softening, uh, chlorine, and those things. After we went to city water, the city was only required to chlorinate, and we would only chlorinate at key points, and those key points are, are now at plant number two, for example. The equipment was then basically unplugged um, or just shut down. A lot of that equipment is corroded. Uh, some of the equipment uh, can be called a hazard. Um, so there are some safety concerns related to this as well, whether it's the wiring, whether it's the motor controllers. Um, this is a project that has been long overdue. And also, Brian and I did discuss, can we wait and just do one project then? Then it went back to fairness and who do we award it to, uh, whereas the city administrator and I said, we should do this project now. There are funds available. We've been working on this project uh, from the bidding process uh, for quite a while. Any other discussion, Alvin Achi? If this was the first time that we were bidding it out and it came out 35000 instead of the budget of 25000 I would tend to agree with uh, Alderman Podorowski that uh, maybe we should wait uh, and uh, rebid it. But we've gone around, run and run on this uh, bid uh, several times, and we got our city electrician, city engineer involved, and they've done a very thorough review of what needs to be done. And I'm not sure that if, the, um, if we waited until next year, the results would be any different. In fact, in fact, it might be even higher than what we have now. So I would propose that we go ahead with it. Well, in that case? I would agree with all the Menachi. We actually discussed, this actually came up, Dan, in 2011 when we first started Recently. talking yes. about it in terms of what the cost could be in 2011. And then Dan actually went out with bids last year, and as Alderman Opti has said, Municipal Services has talked about this at least three different times. And the, we had recommended to the City Council that they reject the bid, so that's, that's been done already. This is not something that's been done in the last month. This has been over the course of the year. This discussion has taken place among, in our committee. Any other discussion? The rule, please. Seifert? Aye. Marquez? Aye. Avci? Aye. Belke? Aye. McIver? Aye. Paderaski? No. Shower? Aye. Six ayes and one nay. The motion has been approved. Let's move to questions and comments and announcements from the council, first of all. Uh, these, uh, these can be of a general nature. Just one oh, minor yes. comment. Um, <clears throat> I had a couple of events that I did in the last couple of years, which took up a lot of my time. And now that those events are over, I finally got the the Ward 4 website up. It's DarianWard4.org, 4 being a number, not a, not written out. So it's DarianWard4.org. And residents, not only from my ward, but any ward can sign up. And I send out newsletters, and the website does get updated periodically. So um, it should have up-to-date information for anybody that wants to reach out even further. Uh, Alderman McIver, I think you have a website too, don't you? No. Did you? Uh... Okay. Uh, Jen, may maybe you could send us uh, an email if there's anything um, Alderman Seifert needs to. I, I don't know the the websites. Well, in terms of the potential for you. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I'm not familiar with the websites, but just something that you have. Just there's case. nothing unique on there. It's pretty generic. Make sure but, you get. Yeah. yeah, you know, for uh, because that's. Uh, it's, I'm not sure about residents emailing you in that public of that. So, John. Will Right. Sounds something okay. 
Let's open up the, uh, the floor to anyone in the audience who would like to speak to the City Council on any kind of items. I think Mr. Taft is here to speak to us. Hi, Bob. Welcome. Hello. Hi. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor, for hearing me and Council members. I uh, just wanted to do, uh, touch on a subject, see if we can get it brought up for a vote uh, at some point. Um, I'm the owner of uh, Q Billiards, or formerly Q Billiards, now known as Q Bar over here in Darien. Um, I've owned it for 12 years. Uh, I grew up in Darien. Uh, I've lived in this general area my whole life. Um, I have a lot of ties with a lot of different people in here in different ways. Um, I'd just like to touch base because there's a, a, a you know, I'm obviously not Walmart or Home Depot, but uh, that being said, I have been paying, you know, a, a lot in sales tax, amusement tax, liquor license fees, sticker fees, et cetera, uh, for the last 12 years. And to be quite honest, uh, for the last three years, I've lost money every year at, at, at Q and a significant amount. It's an extremely challenging uh, market for my type of business right now. Um, as you all know, uh, I mean, first of all, obviously the tax I pay, I do employ 26 people there. So there's a lot of people that, that are employed there. Um, and most of them, it's their full-time job. Um, you know, we, we've tried to revamp the place a couple times uh, to no avail. And that's when we recently changed the name to Q-Bar and tried everything new. It's new, clean inside, new carpet, walls, paint, construction, all sorts of stuff. Uh, so it looks a, a lot better. We've really tried to grow the business. Well, it, needless to say, it really hasn't worked. Um, and quite frankly, uh, without a new revenue stream, uh, I don't see that I'm going to be open much longer. Um, we put, when I redid the, the change to make a Q-Bar, I actually signed a personal guarantee for the uh, first time in my life. And so I have to be there for another six months, eight months, uh, I think it is. And after that, I'll, I'll probably close the place down. And like I said, it's not, you know, Walmart or Home Depot or whatever, but we do pay, you know, a decent amount of taxes and, like I said, employ a lot of people. That being said, a big reason for that, one of the new things obviously in Illinois that I know I discussed here about three years ago uh, is the video gaming. Uh, I know it went live um, back in October, um, and so far uh, the results have been very strong for the communities that have allowed it, uh, very strong uh, tax revenues for the communities uh, as well as for the business owners. Um, and it's not that it's a windfall for the business owners. It's literally a necessity to stay open. Uh, as of right now, Westmont has opted in which when we're teetering on the brink right now and, and, and losing what, what I've lost each year for the last three years, if I lose another 3% to Westmont uh, locations where people may want to do the video gaming, uh, you know, what does that say? Oak Brook Terrace is in, you know, Lamont is in, and there's some other ones in the area that I know are, are getting in. Um, with all that being said, uh, the numbers, you know, from the state so far have been very strong uh, for locations and for what the, the cities make, obviously. Um, you know, we, we already allow video uh, things like Lotto and things like that. I don't understand what the difference is when I'm a 21 and over establishment. Uh, I'm already vetted by the Liquor Commission and vetted by, you know, the state uh, as far as my, my credentials. Uh, and I'm not someone new coming to the community. I've been here, like I said, my whole life. Uh, you know, I, I grew up here, um, and I've been there for 12 years now. Um, but the truth of the matter is economic factors are what they are, and, you know, I've lost a lot of money for the last three years, um, which, you know, fortunately I have other locations and other businesses that I've funded it with, but the truth is I'm kind of done funding it. Um, so it's something that I'd like to see if at least we can get a vote on it. Um, I know that uh, there's someone here to speak about it a little bit further to give you guys some idea of what the other communities are seeing. Um, types of numbers that they're seeing. Um, and I have first-hand knowledge of a couple friends that have locations, and it, literally they, they held out until the video gaming came to see if it would keep them alive before deciding to say enough's enough. And, uh, you know, it, it's done very well for them, so they've been able to keep the doors open. And I'm not talking a, a, a windfall well. I mean, literally, to keep the doors open. I mean, as you all know, the economic climate for <laughs> all sorts of vendors, and, you know, restaurants, everything, you see all the two-for-one coupons and different email blasts and come here, we'll give you this, we'll give you this. You know, there's no secret. They're giving everything away just to keep, you know, keep the things flowing through. Um, just as you've all experienced, I'm sure, uh, you know, increases in your electricity bills, your NICOR bills and all that, multiply it times 15, and that's what I've experienced. On top of that, the cost of every product we bring in in the last five years has went through the roof, and we really can't pass it on to the consumers. So 
uh, although my actual sales aren't down a tremendous dollar amount, there's literally you know nothing left for for myself as the operator, and I've literally been writing big checks every year to keep the place open. So um, I just wanted to see if we can maybe get it brought up and uh, have everyone vote on it, take a look at what the other communities are doing in our area. Because uh, truthfully, uh, when Westmont, you know, they start going live in Westmont, it's that's pretty much the the, the nail in the coffin, if you will. Um, Bob, you said they just opted in, but mm -hmm. they've already gone live. I don't know if they went live yet. Well, that's um, what you just said. So I was, I, said, I, was I, I, I was, I thought I said when they go live, oh, when? that will okay. be the nail in the coffin. So, um, but you know, because I mean, listen, I know we're talking about a couple percent of my people that may go down there, but when you're losing X, you know, you're definitely adding a big number to it, so. Alderman McIver? I have a question. What does it mean to opt in? Do you have to do something? Is there a referendum? What is it? Uh... It's it's already legal. Uh, uh, Bill can speak to it a little bit further. Uh, he knows a lot more about it. Uh, but, uh, I mean, it's legal in Illinois. It's, it's, you go anywhere in Illinois, not anywhere, but any city that's allowed it, it's, it's there, it's prevalent. I mean, it's not a problem. It's, it's no different than if you go in and you, like, come in now. We have, uh, basically like the mega touches, if any of you are familiar with those. They have in restaurants, bars, you just play little games, tic tac toe, et cetera, things like that. They're just like that. That's all it is. And, uh, they have them, uh, like I said, Westmont's getting in. There's a lot of villages that have been. I went and seen them in other locations. I mean, they're really nice, real high end, nice machines. And, yeah, like we, we made a decision a while ago not to. Right. Oh, so I remember. Now, yeah. I remember that, and yeah. it's been it's been it's a while since the, yeah, years, yeah. yeah, since oh. the topics come up. I get, Bob, do you have an idea how you would format it? How many machines you would need to be able to assist you and help you out? The maximum they allow for a location is five. It's five. Um, I would imagine, based on the size of my location, we're talking about fifteen thousand square feet. We are now, so I mean, we're a big place. Um, I, I would imagine five. I mean, you know, there's there's in a lot of the other towns, there's places that are. You know, 3,000, 2,500 square feet, and they have five. So um, it would be kind of separated. It would be a nicer, clean little, like, area off to itself somewhat, you know. Um, you know, we're, you know, it would be nice for the people to go and play and have fun. But, yeah, probably five. That's the maximum that's allowed. Okay. Any other questions for, for Bob? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> just, again, to reiterate, a couple of years ago or several years ago when the council passed the ordinance, uh, the discussion at that point was that really philosophical at that time. It was not to have that in the community. It wasn't, we didn't really talk so much about the economics of this. So if, if you know, due to the current economic conditions, you know, the council may consider this a, a different look at this issue. I'm not sure. Uh, we would have to resurrect all the information that we had before in order for a committee to, uh, yeah, to it, discuss, discuss if the council's If the council is not... A, um, uh, doesn't object to it on a moral issue, then, yeah, we would have to dig out the, the economics of that. Uh, we, if, if, our, if everybody is in agreement or let me know how you stand on that, we could uh, bring up that issue and send would it to Would that go to committee. finance? Pardon me? That, what committee would that go to? It go to Administrative, administrative Finance. finance. I, you know, I'd be interested in learning more about it. I think it's three years later. I mean, it's, it's true. I mean, if we're not opposed to selling lottery tickets at gas stations, you know, I mean, that's gambling. You know, um, I, I guess I just like to kind of get an update on this particular topic three years down the line, and I'm not saying it. You know, from I'm just what are other towns information, doing? Getting yeah, information. That's right. I agree. I would like the same thing. I like the same information. Again, he's a business owner. He has been around 12 years. I'd like to see what it would take in terms of revenue, what other communities are making based on this. When we first talked about this, we were going on a lot of a lot of information that was coming out. Of a negative nature with regard to well, what comes along with gambling, right? Yeah, right. All, the, all the negatives I mean, that, that come along with gambling. Honest, that's what we were looking at, and communities were were told you either vote this up or down, and we decided at that point to vote it down. Well, it is a different time. Uh, you know, sometimes you have to look at things in terms of the unique nature of the business that you have, where you're located in the city of Darien and what it might take for you to be able to maintain that business in the city of Darien. So, I would be willing to look at the the data as well. You know, uh, I do get pulled periodically from the administrators and of our surrounding communities, especially now that Westmont is, you know, is, is going to have this, and and I think they are watching it. So if Westmont uh, offers this, I think other communities in our area will also uh, jump on that. So it, we may not be the only ones left looking at this again. I think Romeoville already has it too. Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, Joliet's in, Romeoville's right. in, well, Lockport's Romeo in. I mean, there's Jeez. a lot. There what what location in Westmont? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. It's oh, he, he's, he has Q Bar on, on Cass Avenue. It's 8109 South Cass Avenue. Yeah, it used to be La Q, and then it was oh, Q Billiards for like 12 years, and then we just switched it. Yeah. yeah. 
What do, do, is the specific location that may be going live targeted in Westmont? Do you know? They're all applying. Now that okay. they're live, they, they can apply through the state, okay. which, I mean, you have to go through the whole right. FBI background check and, okay. and state. I mean, it's a big, big application. To Bob, does your other establishment have uh, no, video gaming? No, we do not have it in Downers Grove. What Grove. municipality are you in? Downers Grove. I have one in Downers Grove. And I have, uh, have they, large are you one. petitioning them also? I'm, I'm going to be. Um, yeah. But I, the one establishment, I sold my largest establishment in 2010. Uh, was that in Carroll Stream or something? That was, yeah, Sharp yeah. City in Glendale Heights. Uh, that uh, they, they do allow there, and, and Glendale Heights, I believe, they're in on that. I'm not positive because I haven't followed it, but uh, Downers Grove, I'll, I'll petition as well. Uh, John, once this is open, if the, if the council were to open this, it would apply to other liquor license holders also? Essentially the ones that are, have pouring licenses, your bars yeah. and restaurants. Those are the only ones that are allowed? Yes. Yeah. Oh. How My understanding is there's very have? few. I mean, Bill actually knows a little bit about it, but there's a, there's not a lot of them, obviously, in Darien. And Brian, Brian it's, it's too late probably for this um, police committee's agenda, but it might be worth just having the chief discuss, you know, if, if there's trends related to having this type of business, you know, this type of um, gaming in a, an establishment and yeah. related to gangs, crime, anything like yeah, that. Yeah, we, we could raise I it. Would, might not, uh, yeah, it might be too soon, but we can, well, we can give yeah, it a try. No, no, it doesn't so need to just, be posted on the agenda because no, 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 it's no, information, yeah, it's just, yeah, so it's it's I'll talk to the chief. Right. And, uh, I'd be kind of curious. Yeah, we'll too. talk to the chief, and he could certainly address that okay. on Wednesday night, sure. Do we want to get, we'll, we'll get back to Bob with the date specific when the Administrative Finance Committee will, ad, will address this? Isn't that uh, yeah, Monday too early? Email. Thank you. We're, we're meeting Monday, so I, I don't see any reason we couldn't, you know, work to add this on the, the agenda for a week from tonight. But I'll email you. That'd be great. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Belkin? I was just to say, is it too late to put that on our survey? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, it's too late to put on our survey. But actually, there is some people that were supposed to sign up for a more in-depth survey, weren't, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Once we get this... Uh, um, the, the preliminary survey done. We had talked about getting others for a more in-depth survey. It's possible if the timing's okay to bring. Yeah, I think all of us it would be incumbent upon all of us to talk to uh, constituents right now and what, what, get their thoughts. Uh, we we run into our constituents at the grocery store and everywhere else, so we might as well ask them what what they think. Thanks, Bob. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Alderman Abshi. I just wanted to mention uh, <coughs> Go ahead. Uh, that um, tomorrow we have another meeting. Well, we the, have, the initiative, the uh, uh, initiatives uh, committee uh, is meeting tomorrow. All uh, school districts and park district, and uh, there's quite a few things on the agenda. Uh, unlike the previous times we had the meeting, so uh, it will be here at seven o'clock uh, tomorrow evening. Yeah, and we can certainly ask them all about video ga ga gambling while we're at it. Yes, sir. Your name? Hello. My name is Bill Feiler. I'm the owner of American Video Gaming in Woodridge, Illinois. Uh, we're a licensed terminal operator for the state of Illinois, and we service the amusement games over at Q uh, Bar in Darien. Um, I basically came to the meeting tonight to uh, pass on some information to the village board about video gaming. We're a city, by the way. We're not a village. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. To the city of Darien. Yeah. Excuse me. And, um, I have some handouts here. Um, we have multiple copies. Um, it's basically a presentation on video gaming. Rather than trying to take uh, the village board members through the, the reports here, I was just hoping to leave these here and possibly pass out copies. Uh, there's some very interesting information about the video gaming economic impact, what it would mean for revenues for the city of Darien, and um, a, a lot of useful information. Thank you. Um, I also have here. Um, with the Illinois Video Gaming Act, um, I don't know if the uh, city is aware that uh, the 25% tax that goes to the state of Illinois is part of the funding for the Illinois Capital Bill, which is the governor's uh, plan to put people back to work in the state of Illinois. Uh, there's some information in the, the handout there about this, and um, there are some projects here that the city of Darien benefits directly from the uh, Illinois Capital Bill. Um, this is just a one-pager here that shows roughly $543,000 in capital projects that the city of Darien would benefit from. Uh, but a good part of this funding comes from the video gaming tax that the state of Illinois is earning. So it's not just the issue of video gaming. Um, also benefits the cities that participate uh, by helping the state raise taxes and revenue, uh, revenues for the capital bill. 
And we also have here, this is just a report of locations that have been licensed in the state of Illinois. Um, there's already been, um, I believe we're well over up to about 1,000 locations at this point that are licensed in the state, and they're expecting as many as 10,000 to be licensed when it's all said and done. If they're licensed, does that mean they're operating already? Uh, that means uh, they're receiving licenses from the Illinois Gaming Board, and machines are in the process of being installed in the locations. Um, as Bob mentioned, uh, the city of Westmont just opted in a few weeks ago. It will take a location there approximately six to eight months to actually get licensed by the Illinois Gaming Board. Uh, it's a rather lengthy process. They have to go through Illinois State Police investigation, Illinois Gaming Board investigations. Nobody gets an a license in this industry without having very, very thorough background checks done, uh, including our company. And, um, I also have here, it's just a revenue report um, from the state of Illinois from the month of December 2012. This shows all the locations that are up and running in the state of Illinois, and it actually breaks down the total revenues for each location. This is all public information available on the Illinois Gaming Board's website. So a town can actually see, uh, if they do have establishments that have video gaming, what is being earned, and the town gets a 5% tax, or the city of Darien in this case will get a 5% tax off of the machines, and you're able to track how much of the state of Illinois um, the tax being generated off of the gaming machines would be. Now, are those additional handouts you have for us? Or additional, is this, unfortunately, okay. I only have one copy of these, but the Illinois Gaming Board has a wonderful website um, that all of this information is on their website. So if, it, if the uh, board members want to look further into it, um, they've really done a good job with posting that information. Very good. Okay. So you can pass that on to the administrator, and he can share it with all of us. Well, then if a town at some point does decide op to opt into video gaming, uh, this is just a one-page sheet, who they would need to contact at the Illinois Gaming Board to notify the Gaming Board of the village's intentions. Uh, you said it takes six to eight months just to get licensed? Um, once a town actually opts in, like when Westmont finally decided to opt in, uh, which was a few weeks ago, it will actually take a location about six to eight months to get licensed by the Illinois Gaming Board. Bob, I thought you mentioned you'd be out of business in six months. How is that going to work for you if we approve this? But you said six months, so I was curious, and now we're hearing that it takes six to eight months for you to get licensed. And then, um, I just if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Anyone have questions for Alderman Abchi? I know you said some of this information is in the handouts that are going around, but can you tell us uh, what municipalities have already uh, have this in place and how long they've had it uh, in terms of uh, actual? Are machines? you talking about neighboring ones, uh, Hello? Well, uh, neighboring ones uh, at first, but you know any uh, town and municipality, you know. That has who, it. who has it already? Well, the the machines already in place, um, and then how long they've had it? Okay, um, machines started going live in the state of Illinois in September of 2012. Uh, at the end of September, there was, I believe, eight locations in the state that had machines. Um, now, every month, the Illinois Gaming Board is adding two to three hundred locations. Um, one of the reports there um, does show, uh, it lists every town that has the machines right now, what the location's name are, and what the revenues are. Yeah. Um, you can see um, in there there will be uh, information from Lamont. Um, there's locations up and running in Lamont. Uh, there's locations running in Countryside. Um, you have Indian Head Park, Brookfield. Um, also, who else is up? Oak Brook Terrace just opted in recently. Uh, they're going to have machines coming live. Carroll Stream, Bartlett, many, many towns. Um, and they are in the one report there, it actually lists, you can actually look at every town that has video gaming and what the revenues are for each location, which gives an idea of just how many hundreds of towns in the state are actually allowing the video gaming. So the best thing, I would probably direct you to that. One of the one report... Um, it was there was a single copy 
No, it went that way. Okay. It was the one that shows the December revenues for the state of Illinois. I just have a bunch here I was going to copy and send to the council. I'm just going to look at that tonight. Okay. Oh, the chief's arrived. Uh, Alderman Adachi, did you have another question? No, that's it. Did, uh, okay. Clerk Ragona, did you have it? Yes, if I could have the spelling of your last name, please. It's F as in Frank, I-L-E-R. That was a tough one. <laughs> Any other questions for Mr. Fuller? Or Filer? Did I say it wrong? It's Filer. It is Filer. Okay. Thank you. One question. Everything you handed out, was that from the gaming uh, state gaming website? Um, yes, yeah, so most of those forms are from the Illinois Gaming Board's website. The presentation on video gaming, that's something that was prepared uh, by our, um, our, our industry. Um, it's kind of a handout. I'm asking about the Illinois Gaming, uh, this document that you sent. Uh, that's actually off of the Illinois Gaming Board's okay. website. Correct. Um, under the video gaming section, there's just a wealth of information. It shows mm -hmm. all the licensed locations, all the applied for locations, the revenues for all the locations around the state. Um, so, okay. so that's okay. really, there's a tremendous amount of all the rules and regulations and mm -hmm. procedures. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience want to address the City Council on any subject matter? Then I'd like to ask for a motion to adjourn. Alderman McIver, seconded by Alderman Beek Belke. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. You know, the problem with this kind of stuff is the minute there's tons of locations, it just, it, you know.